and the way she approaches things. I love her to death. I'd like to introduce to the Nikon stage, Jen Rosenbaum, Nikon ambassador, here to talk to you about how she makes photos Thank empower you. women. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi guys, how are you today? Uh, first, I want to say thank you to Nikon for having me here. Uh, it's always a special occasion when I can spend it with uh, my Nikon family. Um, and I appreciate you guys being here and everybody at home. Hey, hi. <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, so into my portraits, um, you know, it's interesting because I'm going to I'm going to put my glasses on, you guys. Uh, it's interesting because I think that, you know, like Mike said, he introduced me as a boudoir photographer. And I am a boudoir photographer. That's really how I started. But some people don't really know what boudoir actually is. And I think over the years, actually, my photography has changed. So I like to call it a little bit more about uh, intimate photography versus boudoir photography. So I'm going to give you a little bit of, um, thank you for making that larger for me, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys a little bit um, of a background of how how I discovered this type of photography. 10 years ago, actually just about 10 years ago this month, um, I had my first boudoir shoot. And 10 years might seem like a long time, but it's really not that long. But, uh, so I've learned a lot over the years. But 10 years ago, I was going through a really difficult time in my life. I was a stay-at-home mom. I had a three-year-old daughter. And we were trying to have another baby. And as you know, Mother Nature has her ways. It doesn't always work out the way you plan. And we had gone through um, a lot of difficulties. And it was a really tough time for me. Emotionally, physically, my body was going through a lot. My femininity was called into question. Right? If I'm a woman and I can't protect children in my own body, if I'm having miscarriages or ectopic pregnancies, how can I relate to being a woman when I'm going through all of that? And the hardest part about going through things like that is that people don't talk about it. Women don't talk about these issues. Right? It's a secret. Don't tell anybody that you had a miscarriage. Don't tell anybody you're struggling with infertility. So it became very hard for me to be places where people were happy and having babies and celebrating first birthdays. So I started feeling a, li a little bit of a recluse, like a little bit, like I really needed to kind of pull back from what was happening in life because I would go to these occasions and I would be happy for my friends and then I would get in the car and I would bawl. I would just cry for hours. Why can't I have another baby? Why can't I have what I want, what I want in my life? So I picked up a camera one day and I said, you know what? Well, in fairness, my husband had bought me a D80 as a gift, uh, a Nikon D80 about a year before this. And you know, I picked up the camera and I was playing with the knobs and I don't know, I made some sort of something that made no sense. And I was like, oh, I don't know how to use this camera. I'm just gonna kind of put it down, right? Typical. So um, fast forward a year, I'm in this difficult situation. I'm looking for something to distract my mind because as you can hopefully tell, I'm a, more of an upbeat type person. So when I'm feeling sad, or I'm feeling distracted with things, I want to pick up a camera, I want something as a distraction. So one day I decide, you know what, none of this anymore. I'm not going to sit around and feel bad for myself. I'm going to take my camera and I'm going to figure out how to use it. And I will never forget, I can see it in my mind right now. I sat down and I put a cup on the table and I put the camera down and I took a picture. And then I turned a knob. I don't know what the knob did, I'm not going to lie to you, but I turned it and I took another picture. And then I turned it again and I took another picture. And then in the next round, I chose a different knob and I turned that knob and I did it again and again and again, over and over and over. And then I would go back and I would study my photos. And I would try to understand the correlation between moving a knob and what it did to my photo. Okay, I'm not, I'm not a book learner. I need, I'm a hands-on learner, so I needed to do that. And so this is what I did. I taught myself photography. And what's so beautiful about that was it gave me an opportunity to then pick up my camera, and a friend would say to me, do you want to come to my son's first birthday party? And I would say, yeah, definitely. I want to come and take pictures of all the kids. And the camera served as a tool in two different ways. You know, you might just see a camera, but for me, it was a, a total tool of healing and survival at the time. The camera allowed me to be present, but not completely, right? Because I had it in front of my face, and I was talking to the kids, and I was hanging out, and I didn't have to necessarily hear about everybody's problems being up at night and feeding their children. But it also allowed me to see joy. It allowed me to see beauty in people. It allowed me to capture smiles. It was such a beautiful tool for that. So fast forward um, a little bit, and um, 
somebody, a friend of mine had asked me to shoot a couple of small weddings, right? I had a little experience under my belt. I had a nice camera. Um, but I said, to, I remember saying to my husband, well, I, ha I have to get a new camera now. Now I'm a professional. I'm shooting weddings. And I just want to make a public apology to anybody if you're here that I shot your wedding or you're watching at home. I'm sorry. Because I really had no business shooting weddings whatsoever. I had no idea what I was doing. But it was fun. They were, I was shooting elopements in New York City. I would go to Central Park for a few hours, photograph some people that were in love and people that were happy. So I convinced my husband I needed a new camera, right? And I went out and I bought the D700, which is a full frame, beautiful DSLR. And it's a re at the time, it was like the most amazing Nikon camera. And I just loved it. And that camera actually literally changed the trajectory of my life. Because a friend of mine who was also sort of what I call a photographer at the time um, was booked a boudoir shoot with two women. She said, I booked two sisters. And uh, I want you to come with me. And let's be real here for a second. She did not hire me or ask me to come help her because I'm so awesome. She asked me to come with her because I had a better camera than she did. OK, so my camera had better ISO capability than hers did. So therefore, I needed to be there. And I have no pride. So I said, yes, I will be there. <laughs> and you know, we walked into this room, and it was yellow. The carpet was yellow, and the walls were yellow, and the ceiling was yellow. And we had no lights. We had no idea what we were doing. It was such a beautiful time of ignorance is bliss. If I walked into that room now, I'd probably have a heart attack. But we walked in, and we were like, this is going to be great. And it was terrible. The pictures were terrible. And by the way, they were on my website for at least three years. The pictures were terrible. But I didn't know. I didn't know they were terrible. I loved it. I connected with these women in a way that I had never felt connected before. And I ran home, and I said to my husband, I am not a wedding photographer anymore. When I grow up, I want to be a boudoir photographer. And he said, OK, whatever. <laughs> you know, Jen has another idea, no problem. Uh, no, he was fully supportive. And I immediately turned my bedroom into a boudoir studio. Now, the funny thing is, one of the sisters who we photographed was not so happy with her images, and I really don't blame her. And I said to her, no problem. I have a studio now. I'll bring you to my studio, AKA my bedroom. And that's how my business got started. And this was the most amazing thing about boudoir photography. It, it took me out of my trenches. And you know, here I'm thinking, OK, boudoir photography could help other people too. But really, they were helping me. It was like the exchange was absolutely amazing. So I have this expression, uh, shed your clothes, shed your inhibitions. And people often say to me, I don't understand. Why do you shoot women in lingerie? What is it sex? Is it like you know, objectifying women? And I say, no, that's not the thing. When women shed their clothes, they shed their inhibitions. You never really know what's going on underneath somebody's shell, right? This is true of life. Boudoir photography, in a way, has made me so much more sympathetic and empathetic to everybody. You could walk down in this hallway right now, and somebody bangs into you, and you go, oh, jerk. Whoa, what was that about, right? Or you can say, you know what? I don't know what's going on with that person today. I can't tell just by looking at the outside. So. I'm standing in front of the words, I just realized. So what do I do? What is an intimate portrait? It is one that allows a woman to celebrate her unique femininity shamelessly. And that can mean so many different things, you guys. You know, being a woman in this day and age right now, it's exciting and it's also difficult. It's kind of difficult to, to figure out who we're supposed to be, right? We, we have these opportunities to be whoever we want, but who are we supposed to be? And we often um, judge from the outside, right? Here are some photos of beautiful women you look at and you say, well, what's her problem? She looks beautiful, right? And I would start experiencing this in my studio. Women would come in and I would say, oh, must be tough to be her. Must be tough to go through life like that, you know? I'm going through all these problems with infertility and, and you know, nobody can see it and I have to keep it quiet and what's so hard about being her? But what happened was when women started coming to my studio, we started talking. And there became a lot of whispers of like, me too, Jen. I also had a miscarriage. Or I'm suffering right now from something that nobody can see, but it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Or I just lost somebody. Or I'm going through a divorce. And these women might look perfect, but everybody has a story, right? So it became my mission to bond with these women and connect with them so that I can show them the beauty that I see in them, even when they don't feel it. And in turn, they would show me the beauty that they saw in me, even when I didn't feel it, which was absolutely an amazing exchange. And I was just addicted. 
So there's a lot of reasons uh, that women book boudoir shoots with me, right? There's not just one reason. It's not, a woman doesn't wake up one day and just say, I feel really good today. I think I want to go get a picture taken of myself that looks awesome, you know? It doesn't work like that. They have to have a reason, but there's so many reasons. And I found over the years, the more I talk about my struggles and my journey and uh, who I am, the more women come to me and reach out to me. And there's been an amazing influx of that, especially over the last year and a half, which I'll talk about just in a little bit. Um, but it's vulnerable, you guys. Women are nervous, very nervous. In fact, I just got an email yesterday from a client who's like, this is the most vulnerable thing that I have ever done. And it's a responsibility. You know, when I was giving the uh, demo over there and we were talking about pictures and I said, you know, you can take a million good pictures of a woman and one bad one. And which one is she going to believe? The bad one. Always the bad one. Right? What we see and how we feel is often, it screws up, with our, it screws up our lenses. Right? So I need to use my lens to show women what we really see and what they really are. So by the way, doing this, to have this responsibility of being a boudoir photographer, you definitely need to create trust with your clients. And um, you know, if any of you guys follow me on Instagram, you will definitely see this. But creating trust is really about authenticity and vulnerability. I don't only expect that my clients are going to be vulnerable and authentic on that side of the lens. I have to do the same. So you know, going through infertility and talking about it publicly and having those women come in and have me photograph them that were going through the same thing built trust. So I continued that through my career as I went through different things. I ended up getting pregnant and having another baby. And then I would talk about uh, body image issues, right? When you have a babies and getting back to yourself. And then I, w I was starting to approach 40 and I started talking about my 40th birthday, <laughs> which I know it's hard to believe I'm over 40. No, I'm teasing. Um, but I would talk about my 40th birthday and aging and how in this day and age as a woman, it's difficult to age. Um, and I would combine it with my photos and tell stories. And then about a year and a half ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And uh, immediately, just about two weeks after my diagnosis, I was told that I was going to have to have a double mastectomy and chemotherapy. And, you know, it doesn't fall easily on me, like the irony of the fact that I'm a boudoir photographer that mostly photographs women in lingerie, and now I have to amputate a part of my body that um, actually I really liked, if I'm being honest. I realized in that moment, oh my gosh, the universe is giving me something. It's a gift. I'm going to make this into a gift. Yes, was it terrible and horrible and I had cancer and I had surgeries and I'm still recovering from all of that and I'm still being treated, but it was a gift. And I talked very openly about it and I still do. If you, like I said, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll see that. But it has allowed women to come to me in an influx. Believe it or not, I was afraid that cancer was gonna uh, have me lose my business, that people were gonna stop booking me and people were gonna stop coming to me. And yet the opposite happened. More women started coming to me. More women started booking me and saying, you know what, if you can go through that, then I can trust you and I believe in you to help tell my story. So I'm gonna share some of the stories of my clients today. Um, and I really hope that I do them justice because uh, they're just incredibly amazing women. So one of the reasons that people book me is obviously body image. Um, this is Tiffany. I mean, is she not gorgeous? I, just to be honest, I stalked her on Instagram. <laughs> I found her. I love Instagram. I spent a lot of time there. I found her, and I was so enamored by her beauty. I was like, she is incredibly unique. It's what I call uh, beautifully... Um, oh, the word is escaping me. Sometimes that chemo still gets in my brain, chemo brain. Beautifully unconventional, okay? Women often think that we stare at them or we look at them or we judge them for the things that they think are ugly. And the truth of the matter is, we often see those things and think they're the most beautiful things about somebody. So Tiffany went through a period of time in her life where she wanted a dog, and she wouldn't even get a dog because she wouldn't leave the house without putting makeup on to cover up her vitiligo, okay? So it took her like four hours to put her makeup on, and every day she would go out with makeup on. Never, nobody ever saw her without makeup. Nobody even knew that she had the skin condition. And she said, I can't get a dog, Jen, because I can't walk the dog five times a day. What if I don't feel like putting on makeup? I mean, it was affecting her life. 
And then one day she said, you know what, I'm going to start accepting this. It's not getting any better. The vitiligo spreads over her body. So she's like, I'm going to start accepting it. And when she did, amazing things happened. People started asking her to model. People started taking more pictures of her. She started feeling more comfortable in her own skin. Anxieties and depressions and concerns were starting to fade away, right? Because she was accepting who she was. So um, we did the shoot, and I actually also had her on my podcast. I have a podcast as well, and we spoke a little bit about body image and accepting of that. And you know, she said, you know, being in front of the camera really helped me with that. But it's hard. Sometimes people stare. And I said to her, Tiffany, has it ever occurred to you that people stare at you because you're so ridiculously unique and gorgeous? Not because you're ugly, not because you're different in a bad way, but because you're so breathtaking. How could somebody not stare at you? And she was like, I never really thought of it that way. And that's really the beauty of what the camera can do. So this is Sky, and I originally um, worked with Sky. We worked on a project together, but I loved her for her unique look. I loved her hair, and I just thought she was so um, she was fun and different, and I wanted to show that. And we were just having kind of a regular shoot and having fun for some portfolio stuff that I needed. And then all of a sudden, she hopped out of the bathtub, and I saw this. And I was like, whoa, what is that scar? Do you have a story? Like, you must, because that's amazing. And uh, she told me the story behind her scar, which if you don't mind, I'm not going to share. But, but the point of the um, story is, is that it, it's, I'm attracted to it now. It's like she sees, might see it as ugly, and I go, no, that is like probably one of the most beautiful things about you. Tell me about that. And the reason it's beautiful is because it has history. It has story. It has memories. This is where we store all of that, in our scars, in our bruises, in the hard things that we've been through. So of course, immediately, I was obsessed with the scar. And I just think it's super gorgeous and awesome. And it helped her, in turn, go, yeah, you know what? It is kind of cool. I do kind of like it. Maybe I'll wear that bikini again that I stopped wearing for all those years. And this is Elizabeth. I love Elizabeth because she looks like she's 25 years old. But Elizabeth is the mom of five children. Now, I can relate to Elizabeth. I only have two, but I can relate to Elizabeth. When we did the shoot, she said, Jen, you know, she went through the common list that women talk about. I don't like my body. This is the heaviest I've ever been. I've had some children. Things aren't in the place that they used to be. And I'm looking at her and going, who cares? Wherever they fell to looks amazing, <laughs> right? But we have these ideas in our head. We think, I don't look beautiful because I uh, had children, or I don't look good, or I'm not worthy of being loved because my body parts aren't in the place and they used to be. And as a photographer, you can say to a woman, no, it's okay, let me show you how I see you. Let me show you how everybody else sees you. What you're seeing in the mirror, it's not correct. You're wrong. Addiction. Addiction is a funny thing. I think that a lot of people go through addiction whether it be drugs and alcohol or um, food or whatever it might be. A lot of people have addiction, and addiction is invisible. There's a lot of invisible things that we suffer through. This is Alex, and I mean, Alex looks pretty darn perfect, doesn't she? She's pretty perfect. Let me tell you about her. This is actually um, shot with the Z7 straight out of camera, as a matter of fact, no editing at all, OK? So she's pretty perfect. And when I met Alex, I definitely had, um, sorry, Alex, if you're watching, I had one of those moments of what does this chick have to be worried about in life? She's beautiful, right? Her body looks amazing. She's graceful. She's well-spoken. She's smart. And I, I shot her for something I did a few years ago, and then we became friendly. And recently, um, she's a photographer as well. She was in from out of town. She asked me if she could rent my studio. I said, sure. And I said, you know, do me a favor. When you come back to bring me my keys back, how do you feel about like, getting undressed for me? <laughs> you know, I really, I really want to work with you. And we had a long conversation. And in that conversation, she explained to me that she was a drug and alcohol addict. And I never knew that about her. And it's so amazing, this human condition, right? We don't know what anybody is going through until we ask. And we had such a long conversation. And she was telling me so much about how she suffered in her life from loneliness and depression ever since she was young. And all of that led to body dysmorphia and eating disorders and eventually drugs and alcohol. And at 19 years old, she ended up in rehab. Would you ever guess that by looking at her? I hope that, in a way, um, this can change your perception that when you meet somebody and you think, oh, they're so perfect, or their social media feed is amazing, and you look at it and you go, oh, I wish I was them. People are probably, first of all, looking at you that way also. 
but that we really don't know what's going on beneath the surface. So she uses modeling now, and photography also, by the way, um, as a way to heal her body image issues and to spread awareness that what you see is not always what you think. And she also said to me that photography has allowed her to see life as beautiful uh, as it is, even when she struggles with depression and anxiety. So even though she still struggles with it, she's able to say, you know what, I can pick up the camera, I can create beauty. If I don't have it in my life right now, I can make it happen. One of the fun things that I like to do is tell stories through double exposures. And this really struck me. You know, she's a strong girl. I mean, a girl who struggles with anxiety and depression and drugs and alcohol use and has been through all the things that she's been through in life, she's, she's pretty strong, right? But yet delicate at the same time. And I find that so many women are like that. They're strong and delicate. The balance is an amazing thing. So I wanted to show that in an image. And I was able to do that by capturing a double exposure with the flowers to show her as the strength and the flowers as the delicacy of her femininity. So I'm going to give you guys just a quick little behind the scenes of how I might do something like that. This is just, um, and by the way, I want to make it really clear, you don't have to have a fancy studio or lots of money to make women feel amazing. This is my dining room. <laughs> you know, I said, okay, drop off the keys, pop into my dining room, take off your clothes, and let's have a little fun, right? It's really simple. It's just a matter of making things happen with what you have. So I was able to take this image of her, and on the dining room table, I have this placemat with the orchid that you just saw on it, and it's gray and silver. So I took this picture of her, and then I said to her, can you hold up this um, placemat for me? And I took this picture of her, which might not look like much, but then when you get the double exposure and the camera puts it together for you, you get something like this. And for me, this was important to sort of show her inner sparkle, her inner light. Right, the light that shines and guides her even when she thinks she doesn't have it. So here I am able to tell a story, and the Z7 allows me to do that very easily. Again, invisible illness. A lot of women struggle with invisible illness, right? Fibromyalgia or autoimmune disease, many different things. Uh, this is Brittany, and I love Brittany. There's many sides of Brittany. She is very sexy and very beautiful. She also has the most amazing smile, and she's so much fun to be around. You wouldn't know by looking at her, but she suffers from Crohn's disease and suffers pretty badly, actually, from Crohn's disease. In fact, when um, she did this shoot with me, she was embarrassed to talk about it a little bit. She said, you know, Crohn's is really not the sexiest thing in the world. It's a little embarrassing, especially as a woman, to talk about my stomach issues. And Crohn's has actually altered the way she sees her body. She sees her body and says, my stomach is gross, because she knows how she feels inside, right? But I look at her and I say to her, are you, are you kidding? Like, you are so gorgeous. You are so beautiful. And she said to me, taking these pictures allowed me an opportunity to see what other people saw. It changed my perspective of myself. And that's the best thing that I can do with my camera. If I hear that, then it's definitely mission accomplished. Again, infertility, so many of my clients still come to me um, with infertility issues. Uh, this is Floofy. She's uh, pretty amazing and gorgeous. And again, another example of looking at somebody and going, what does she have to be worried about? And she's pretty open about her infertility journey, which I'm really so grateful about because, again, so many women suffer with this in silence. Um, one of the things, you know, I spoke to all of these women before um, sharing their stories because I really don't believe they're my stories to tell. They're really their stories to tell, so I asked their permission and for a couple of words of guidance about what the shoots mean to them. And she said to me, you know, Jen, I want you to tell people also, I suffer from really bad acne. And you might not be able to see it so much in this photo um, because I took it kind of from far away and she had a lot of makeup on. But she said, it, you know, it can prevent me from getting in front of the camera sometimes and doing my job. And I see that a lot with women. They're nervous about putting themselves out there because they weigh a few more pounds than they want to weigh, or their hair isn't exactly the way they want it to be, or they have a pimple on their cheek that day. And I say to people, when you do that, when you stop yourself from being out in the world because of something like that, you are denying all of us your beauty. So to be really careful about that. So I'm very happy for her that she still puts herself out there. 
Now, this is the thing, and these are very heavy topics, right? But not everything is so heavy. Some women just come to me because they want to celebrate their body. And I love that. This is Kristen. This was actually the second shoot I did with her. The first shoot um, was when she was getting married. She wanted to give a gift to her husband. And the second shoot was she had just finished a fitness competition. And she was really proud of that. And that is certainly something to celebrate. And I definitely don't judge women that come in with amazing bodies. But here's the thing. Sometimes people say to me, oh, it's so easy. All these pictures I see of women that are slim and in good shape and young, how hard could that be? And let me tell you, sometimes it's even harder <laughs> than shooting somebody else because she just worked really, really hard for this body. I need to make sure it looks the absolute best that it possibly can because I'll feel really bad if she looks terrible <laughs> in her photos after all that work she did. Um, so this was one of the images I took of her, again, using the light to really sculpt her body and show off all of her hard work. Um, and same thing here, just kind of using the light as a compositional tool to show off her body. And uh, she was super happy with the images. And also here what I'm doing is I'm creating something that a cell phone can't do. Because as photographers, our biggest competition is actually our cell phones. At any given day, a, a, a client can pick up a phone and go, I look good today. Click and send it to her boyfriend or send it to her friend or post it on Instagram or whatever it might be. I want to give her something that she can't create herself, something that's really special. And this is Melissa. Uh, Melissa is uh, an inspiring mom of three who's over 40, and she is really working on inspiring other moms over 40 not to give up on themselves and their bodies and their health and nutrition just because they're 40 and they had kids. Again, sort of dispelling that rumor that we all believe that we have to let ourselves go because we're over the hill, right? Uh, she's pretty amazing. Um, again, here, just using reflections to create interest. She's also in my dining room. I'm in my living room. Really simple, but uh, it allows me to help her appreciate her body. It inspired me to go back to All the right. gym. Hey, folks. Um, well. My name is Corey Rich. And, uh, and this is Kiki. I love Kiki. Great. She came into the shoot like, I'm a yeah, Nikon ambassador, and uh, this right? is Tori here. That. Tori is going to be uh, uh, helping know, she has to, curves, so that I can she illustrate has how I think about shooting because we video. All do. How many and folks here shoot video and to me, on a so mirrorless or DSLR so camera wonderful. or even and a mobile device? By sharing her images and her story, well, so uh, I, I just want to talk kind of at a really high level about how I think about shooting video. And let me give a disclaimer right up front. This is not Chris my answer, world, typically, I have done like shooting in the high fashion. The I guess that's half. what Even I would call it, like wearing Legos or Rubik's women Cubes. Who have suffered from um, that's not cancer. real. It obviously speaks very close to my heart. Um, and I want to show you Christina. Christina is a dancer, was a dancer growing up, and she's also a yoga instructor. In fact, I met her because she is the yoga instructor at my gym. And um, people at the gym knew that I had had cancer, and she was diagnosed shortly after. And when I spoke to her about this, about doing a shoot, um, she said, you know, I've had many insecurities over my body. First, when she was growing up, she was taller and thinner than everybody else, right? Like everything that as women, sometimes we're like, I wish that was my problem now. She had that when she was a kid. And then she went through puberty and she got curvy. And the kids used to make fun of her for that. So she's had a lot of body insecurities. And now she's um, diagnosed with endometrial and breast cancer and it has to have a mastectomy and a total hysterectomy at her very young age. How does a woman even face that, right? How does it even face that? And she said to me, I was in the best shape of my life before this tragedy hit. She went through a mastectomy, she went through radiation, she went through chemotherapy, and I really, I got to see her go through this whole process, and when I finally got her in front of my camera, I said to her, you know, Christina, you're like, this is like amplified you. You know, I, sometimes I tell my fellow breast cancer survivors or cancer survivors that went through chemo, sometimes I think the chemo gave us superpowers. Right? And I could see that in her, just being in her presence, the superpowers, and helping other women accept their bodies. And now, you know, she was going through menopause, so she was concerned about weight gain. She was concerned about body changes. She still needs reconstructive surgery. In fact, these are uh, what are called expanders. They're just a placeholder for breast implants at some point. So she was nervous about that. So she said to me, you know what? <laughs> I remember at the shoot, she said, I'm a little nervous. I've gained a little weight. I've done other... I said, don't worry about it. You're beautiful. You have superpowers. You're gorgeous. And then she messaged me the other day, and she said, you know, I just want to tell you that um, I'm now a model for an intimate apparel company. So she's now modeling. My shoot allowed her to gain the confidence for her to model bras for breast cancer survivors, which I think is totally awesome, because now she's spreading the word to other women that you can be beautiful, too. 
And this is Noelle. And again, this is a beautiful picture of Noelle, right? She looks like a perfect woman. She's gorgeous. Nothing wrong with her. If you met her, you would immediately be drawn to her. She's fun, she's bubbly, she's positive. Her smile radiates for miles. She is the kind of girl you want to take on a trip with you or go out in Vegas with or you know, hang out with at home and watch funny movies. She's so much fun to be around. She's also an ovarian cancer survivor at her very young age. And she has a love-hate relationship with her scars. I love her scar. Um, but she said, oh, look, Jen, you know, this side, they didn't take as much fat as that side, so I'm uneven. I mean, when you have scars like this, we obsess over them a little bit. We notice every little in in intricate detail of our scars and our bodies. Um, and she also struggles with the fact that she can't have children of her own, and that's been a challenge for her to accept. So I took this picture of her tattoo. Um, it says, brave girl, you were made for far more beautiful things. Chaos is only understood when it is loved by the wild, not the weak. This is her survivor tattoo. This is what she carries around on her body all the time. And we had such lengthy conversations about changing your life and how you can approach life after cancer. And she still inspires me every single day. And I'm so grateful to come across women like this that help save me. And then she wrote me this note. Let's see if I can read it. She said, you're amazing. Working with you today was by far one of the best life experiences I've ever had. Your light shines and helps others shine. You made me feel a way I didn't think I could anymore. We wear different outside scars, but I know the ones on the inside are similar. Our bodies may never be as they once were, but I know they are stronger for what they have endured. I'm in awe of you, your work, your philosophy, everything. Truly an inspiration to so many women, including this one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I look forward to doing it again one day, arching my back still, which you'll understand the hashtag if you ever come shoot with me. Arch of the back is very important for posing. But this was unsolicited. She just sent this to me. And when she sent it to me, I realized, you know what? I shoot all these women with their scars and help them embrace their body. Maybe it's time for me to turn the camera on myself as well. And so I've been doing that. I've been working on a self-portrait project to help me embrace my new body and spread the message about breast cancer awareness and breast cancer survival to everybody out there who's following me and hopefully uh, inspiring people to check themselves. I found my own cancer, so make sure you all check yourselves. Um, but also to love yourself and love others, regardless of what they're going to. Don't forget, the only thing separating you and another human is a small piece of clothing and a couple of questions. You can always find time to talk to somebody, inspire somebody. And if you want to see more of these images, you can follow me on Instagram. I share a lot of these um, images at Jen Rosenbaum. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time to share these stories of these beautiful women with me today. I really appreciate you. And thank you to Nikon. It's an honor to be part of this family. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Nikon Ambassador Jen Rosenbaum, you are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we're going to take a little break. We have one announcement to make. I apologize if you haven't heard this yet. Um, photographer Baron Woolman fell and broke his arm and unfortunately is home.